Hi, I'm PJ with Princess Craft RV here in Round Rock, Texas. This is the Revolve by Palomino. It's a Forest River brand and wow, no propane, all the features you would want, lithium ion batteries, inverter, just all the great stuff built into this trailer. So stick around, I'm gonna show you all the details. Now, this trailer is about 22 feet long, it's gonna weigh around 4,000 pounds, and it's gonna cost somewhere around $30,000. There is only four layouts in this lineup right now, and mid-2020, they have designed a standard two-person trailer with a dinette, one with a slide, one without, and then another one that has bunk beds, one with a slide, one without. It's a great trailer if you're looking to go off-grid, so stick around, let's go inside, I'll show you all the details. Now coming into this trailer, what a great open feel. Now this is the slide out version with the bunks. Remember I told you there's another layout that does not have the slide out. So if you're not comfortable with that, you can check that one out. All right, up in the front, nice open sofa. This is a really long sofa. A lot of times when there is a convertible sofa bed, then the sofa gets kind of short, but this is really, very comfortable, very lengthy, so three people could sit here very comfortably. All right, big window in the front. It does have the pull-down shade and windows on both sides with screens. I love that. These are frameless windows, so when you actually open these side windows, they're gonna open like an awning. You're gonna see this go out about two inches enough to get plenty of airflow. The good part is you're actually going to be able to open these when it's raining. Now in the back, the way this works is pretty simple. It's a little different than most. I'll show you on this side. You just unvelcro the wrap. It's a little noisy on these arms and this pillow comes out completely. All right, and then once you do that on both sides, this sofa just lays down like a jackknife sofa. All right, now I will tell you that when you're putting it down, it can kind of catch on the back. So you kind of got to give it a little shove. Then maybe a little bit awkward to crawl over here and grab this and flip it over, but it comes over pretty easily. So that part, it's, it's a little awkward. Now it's not even right now because we've got the bedspread under it but it does even out once you put that mattress down. Now to flip it back over, I'm gonna throw the comforter over it. Just flip this back up, it goes over pretty easily, and you pull your jackknife back up into a sofa, and you have seating space for the day. So while this is not the easiest convertible sofa I've ever done, I really like the way this sofa is full length. Um, I wanted to point out that over here you've got the 120 plug on that side, same on the left side, but you've got the charging ports at the top too for the USBs. So everything's accessible on that side. You do have a shelf over on the left side. If you had, I would of course put my head on that side of the bed so that you can lay down your phone, your glasses, your book, whatever you need to do there. Uh, cabinets above it. I am really a fan of the look of these cabinets. I think it's got a nice mix of a, a wood grain, but not dark. It's got a very modern feel, and they put these modern handles on here, and a gas props on it. So this is about 12 inches deep. You've really got a fair amount of space running through the top of here. And of course, when the sofa is up, 
it's pretty easily accessible from just standing on the floor. Now the height of this trailer is about six foot six. I'm five foot tall, so it is very comfortable for me. Um, someone a little taller may not be as comfortable, but plenty of headroom up there. Now the power fans they've put in this trailer, I think are interesting as well. You have three of them. You have one right above the bed, one further back in the cabin and one in the bathroom. And the way you open them is just push this button and then push this entire handle up and it opens the vent. And then there's a little button that turns on the fan. So it's smaller than what you might have in other units, but uh, it, it works pretty well to pull the air out. It doesn't blow the air in, it pulls the air out. Create some movement in here. If you're camping, gets a little stuffy, you can crack the windows and get some air movement. Always remind people, be sure to turn the fan off before you do anything and then just pull down and it's gonna lock that closed. You do have speakers in here, two right in the main cabin, two on the outside. All of the lights are gonna be push button with a little button right in the middle. So just a very simple, easy to use trailer. Now, as we move to the kitchen, you're gonna know some things are a little bit different. Let's start over here by the door at the very end of the cabinet. Now at the end of the kitchen cabinets, you have the convenience center, which is just a standard uh, panel that you'll find in trailers. You've got the battery monitor here, fresh black and gray. Now this trailer has quite large tanks. You have 44 fresh, 30 gray, and 38 black. Great tank sizes if you're trying to stay off the grid for an extended period of time. And this will all tell you, of course, up at the top, how much is in each of those tanks. Your water pump switch, water heater, uh, porch light, awning light. And then on the left, you've got the slide in switch and on the right, the awning switch. It is a power awning outside. So all of that, very common to see in any trailer. Now on the right, you'll see an Intellitronics energy management system. Now, there are other gauges throughout this trailer, but this is a nice way to see exactly how much power you're using. Um, it is, tells you a load and the amps that you're using, so it, it's a good gauge to see where you're at at any given time. Now, down below, you have a 120 switch, your household plug, and next to that, the microwave and the furnace. So remember, everything in this trailer is electric. So if you're not using those two things, you'll want to turn them off. Be sure they don't draw any power unnecessarily. All right, let's move around to the front of the kitchen. Again, they use this solid surface look right here. Very clean, very modern. And that put together with the wood look and these handles, it just gives you that high-end clean feel, which I appreciate. It does have this grid on the top of the sink. Um, I like this because you can use it to dry dishes and things like that, so everything can kind of seep through. And it does provide more countertop space. So I like to just roll it up. Just rolls out of the way, you can throw it in a drawer. Nice big aluminum sink. It is eight inches deep, large enough for uh, filling water jugs, washing dishes, nice, clean, contemporary single-handle faucet. And next to that is the induction stove. Uh, induction, if you're not used to it, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. It heats up very quickly. There are locks right here on each burner, trying to be sure that they don't uh, get turned on unnecessarily. But um, you'll really like this once you get used to it. It isn't the same as cooking on, say, an electric stovetop that you have at your house. Now down below, a convection microwave. So the convection can actually um, cook. Now the convection can actually grill a steak. You can bake a cake, do whatever you need to as far as an oven would go, but you could also use it as a microwave. Now the downside to this layout because of this induction stove, this gets pretty close to the ground. I don't know how I feel about that, so y'all feel free to leave some comments. 
but it is a way to fit it into this space and have all the features that you need. Okay, let's take a peek. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly how big these ovens are, these microwaves. So there you have it. You can kind of get a feel for that. Now down below your convection microwave is the LP carbon monoxide detector. Well, a little interesting because there is not any LP on this trailer. There's no propane here, so really all this is doing is acting as your carbon monoxide detector. So down below they have built in two nice sized drawers and I really like the fact that they have made them so clean they almost look like part of the cabinetry um, but they're about five six inches deep about two feet long two feet wide and you've got two drawers that just roll right out easily now you do have one more space underneath the sofa we didn't talk about so that leaves a lot of storage the two cabinets up top which open up the drawers underneath and then the storage underneath the sofa. Now you will see blinds on the kitchen, but you won't see blinds anyplace else. Why? That is a fire code standard. So a lot of times in trailers, you have to have blinds in the kitchen area. All right, I like that there's a light right here over the sink. That's where I always wanna see the sink and the stove. You've got a 12 volt television right up here, a 24 inch and this one actually has a swivel arm on it, so you can swivel it towards the bed or watch it from the dinette. Back up just a little bit to talk about the refrigerator when we're looking at the kitchen. This is a compressor-driven refrigerator. And what that means is that it is very efficient on 12 volt. So this only runs on battery power. Now, if you're used to a 12 volt refrigerator in other trailers, they're not very efficient. They're very slow to cool and they really can't get the temperature down any colder than it actually is. All they have the power to do is maintain. But this refrigerator can get cold in a matter of hours, just a few hours, this can get down to temperature. And you'll notice that it's not really shallow. In a standard RV refrigerator, you have coils in the back so it can't go all the way to the outside wall of the trailer. This one requires no venting and you get a lot more space. I really think that these 12 volt compressor driven refrigerators are going to be the wave of the future. They're pretty new right now, but we have had really good success with them. So I would not be worried about that. A little more storage back here. You've got two pantries, each with two different shelves in them. They're really deep, probably two, two and a half feet deep. Um, sometimes that's a little difficult to work with, but lots of space that can be used right here. It can also be used maybe for bathroom storage since that's right behind us. Now, before we go this direction, I wanna switch across from the kitchen and look at the dinette and some other features right here next to it. One more cabinet space right here. Now this top space goes the entire length all the way out to the wall. So it's very deep. Underneath though, there is some gear under there. So you've only got about six inches on this bottom space of depth. So it is not as big as this top pantry. Fireplace. Not only does this offer ambiance, and of course there's all kinds of colors and brightness you can adjust on it, but it also acts as the furnace. All the controls are right here. It's pretty easy to figure out which buttons are which. The first one is gonna turn everything on and off. The next ones, they really tell you in a little LCD display right there what you're working with. And you'll kind of get used to whether you're changing the color or the brightness or whether you're actually turning the furnace on and off. Or you can simply use the far right button and turn the whole thing off. Great feature here for all kinds of things, but that is your heat and a little bit of ambiance in this trailer. Now, while we're standing here talking about our energy efficient furnace and fireplace combination, 
Let's look right here. Uh, this is going to be, I'll pull this plastic off. This is part of the Renogy system. And this again is gonna tell you how charged your batteries are. So this is a battery monitor for the four lithium ion batteries that are on this trailer. The four lithium ion batteries, they're standard. They're part of what they call the off-grid package, along with a 3000 watt inverter and a battery charger. I'll show you that system outside, but this is a great tool to be able to see exactly how charged that lithium system is. Now the dinette just adds to the modern feel. It's got the kind of a wood grain whitewash top to it, neutral colors. It is a few inches short of six feet when you make it into a bed and right at 36 inches wide. Probably uh, good for a lot of adults my size and children. So I would think this would be your fifth sleeping area. We've got two bunks we haven't looked at yet. Both windows open. Again, they tip out just a few inches and that does though give an amazing amount of airflow, especially if you turn on the fans. There is one right outside the dinette area, one over the bed, one in the bathroom. So, you know, this is a pretty comfortable seating area and the slide out gives you a lot more floor space. It is just the same in the EV4. It's the bunk model, but they switched the kitchen and put the kitchen over here and a little smaller dinette on the other side. So if you wanted to have a nicer sleeping area, the slide out is certainly the way to go. Two lights right up in the top. So it's certainly bright enough if you do work at the table or work on a computer double pole underneath this table. So it's really very sturdy. All right, let's look at the shades. We've got a blackout shade that just rolls right down. Whoops, rolls right back up again. Pretty comfortable under here. You've got storage right here under the seating. That's always nice. Really a, an amazing amount of storage in this trailer, the way it's set up. Let's move to the back, look at the bunks, check out the bathroom. Now underneath the refrigerator in these two pantry cabinets is not your standard converter. Because this one is all electric and it's lithium, you have the breakers on one side and over here you have the 12 volt system with the fuses on the left hand side. Now this is a little different than usual because you don't need that standard converter. You need a, a smart charger. It's going to work with the lithium ion batteries and the standard wet cell battery that's on the front of the trailer. We'll talk about that outside. Now the two bunks here are going to be great for adults or kids. They both have nice size windows with of course curtains that cover them, USB ports and lights that are individual to each bunk. A little bit of a narrow opening, but plenty of space once you get in there. All right, the bathroom. Let's take a look. It has the same fan that we have up front, but this one actually has a light attached to it, which is nice. And the rectangular shower, it is a standard RV shower, plenty of space. They did put a curved rod at the top so that the curtain gets a little bit away from you for a little more arm room when you're taking a shower and a skylight. So you've got a fair amount of height, about the same height in the shower as when you're standing on the floor. They also upgraded the toilet so it is a porcelain toilet, much easier to clean, really sturdy, nice feature. Light switch right here on the wall. It's a pretty basic bathroom. It doesn't have any storage, but I'm okay with that because you've got great storage right here outside the bathroom. Okay, now AC right on the top, and of course a smoke alarm. You know, the inside of this trailer feels eh, pretty normal. A few things are a little bit different, but it is powered so differently than the average trailer. We're gonna go outside, walk around, I'm gonna show you some of that gear. Now, if you're looking for a trailer to go off grid, then these sturdy steps with adjustable legs are great. 
They are a standard feature on this. So let me show you how easy they are to work. You just lift them up and push them into the doorway and they clip into place. I really like that feature because it's very easy to get your steps out if you want to just make a quick stop or put them away when you're ready to go. Swing out assist handle. A lot of clearance on this trailer, which is great if you're going off-road, off-grid. Uh, that's really one of the things that I know people will want to do with this trailer. Nice outside speakers, 120 plugs out here, great off-road tires. These are 15-inch mudders with the aluminum wheels. Power awning, it's a nice size awning. You've got a 16-foot awning on this trailer that's going to give you a lot of shade. Down below on the bumper is a receiver and great for a cargo tray carrying extra gear or maybe a bike rack. Uh, behind this tire, you'll see the black tank flush so you can hook up a hose. It's going to clean out that 38 gallon black tank when you're dumping it. Below the satellite cable connection if you happen to be in a park that has that. You've got a rear patio light and down below is where the 30 amp plug actually connects if you're connecting to shore power, just like at a standard park. Outside shower right here with a handheld, hot and cold. Now, uh, this tire really needs to be mounted on the other side and then this would be very easy to get to. Um, it came in here, a little bit of an odd place. I know we'll get comments on that, I get it. Um, up here you will see some ports that maybe you're not in, used to seeing. These are actually for an outside portable solar panel. So this is not the plugs that you're probably used to seeing on RVs, but it's very common in the, in the industry that maybe puts solar panels on houses. So it's got a heavy gauge wire on it. It charges quickly. Uh, and if you have a solar panel with a smaller plug on it, like you will find with ZAMP or GoPower, then they do make adapters that are like $10 or $20, very easy to adapt these larger solar panel plugs to the one that maybe your solar panel has. You can find those on Amazon, easy to get. All right, coming around, you can actually see the power center of this trailer. Battery disconnect switch right here. Pretty standard in a lot of trailers, and it disconnects literally every system on this. The whole thing shuts down. This large box right here from Renogy, which this entire system is made by Renogy for the most part, and they have a pretty good website explaining what all these features are, what they do. This is the 3000 watt inverter. There is a display on the front and the way the design fits in this cabinet, it's actually upside down. So I don't have any trouble looking at it, but it is kind of odd that it's upside down. Uh, you can see actually the power coming in and the power going out. So a little bit of a monitor there, but remember you have two different places to look inside. Uh, right by the door you can tell how much power your trailer is using and the panel that's right by the bunk beds will give you a lot of this same information as well. Now behind this 3000 watt inverter you'll see a black box and that actually holds the four lithium ion batteries that are used by this inverter to power the microwave, the air conditioner, the features in this trailer that normally you would need to plug into shore power to have them run. Now, how long will the air conditioner run? I'm told uh, by the folks at Palomino, it'll run four to six hours. You know, that is not maybe the eight hours that you're hoping to sleep, but for most of us, that is enough to get us through the night uh, in really hot camping. So in the morning, you would need to recharge those batteries and you could do that either with the shore power. You could do it if you're gonna break camp and drive, then while you're driving, of course, it's gonna charge those batteries or solar power because this trailer has four 100 watt solar panels on the roof. If you're parked in the shade, you might wanna use the port on the back for the 300 watt solar panel that you could actually put out in the sun while you're camped in the shade. So you've got quite a few options to keep these batteries going. 
and that allows this inverter to keep everything in this trailer running. Now here you have two switches. The top switch is going to turn off the inverter. And that's going to be useful when you're in storage. You don't want this inverter trying to be ready to power anything you might turn on. Underneath, this switch is going to turn off all the 12 volt power in the camper. The battery disconnect, it is going to disconnect the lithium ion batteries completely from everything in the trailer. So at that point, nothing is going to be running. Everything's going to be disconnected. Uh, so all of this will control what's running. Um, now it's a little confusing. Renogy has great information on each of these systems. Uh, they also have a tech line that you can call if you need some help, but pretty much it's going to be self-explanatory when you're out camping. You're going to learn this system pretty easily. Uh, I didn't have any trouble trying to figure out what ran, what didn't. Uh, it just took a little bit of using it and it starts to make perfect sense. So. Um, what you want to do is keep these lithium ion batteries charged and then your entire system works. Down below, standard sewer hookups. You've got the gray tank, the black tank over here. Does look a little bit low, but keep in mind you're right behind the wheel. You've got a lot of space back here, so I don't think you're going to have any trouble with it dragging. Storage right up front. Nice light right here. Again, the push buttons are all right in the middle here, so that's easy. These compartment doors do have a catch on them. The ones up front will have a magnet. This one does not. It has a catch because it can't open all the way because of the window. It does have the slam latches on it, so with a good push, it's going to latch up and keep all of that out of the way. Let's look on the other side of the slide. Up here in the front, this is the connection to your fresh water. Of course, up here on the top, you will fill that 44 gallon fresh water tank. And this will be your city water fill if you're going direct from a hydrant. Six gallon water heater, runs on electric, of course. And down below, I like to point out the low point drains because they're right here underneath your water system. And not only did they give you a hot and cold drain, but they also gave you the fresh water tank drain. So if you wanted to drain your fresh water before you got out there on the road, easy to do right there. Now this trailer has only four options. So now's a good time to mention them because you've got four stabilizer jacks, of course, one on each corner, um, but there is an option to get power stabilizer jacks. Another option is going to be a jacket bike carrier, which mounts right over the electric tongue jack on the front of the trailer. Another option is going to be actually the large tires we've been looking at. They're 15 inch wheels with 28 inch mudder tires. Now they call that the off-road package, but you know, on an off-grid camper, why wouldn't you get that as an option? Now the last option that you can get on this is a 300 watt solar panel that's portable that you would actually hook into the back of the trailer like we were talking about. If the 400 watt solar panels that are on the roof were happen to be in the shade, that would be a great feature to have. All right, now that we've covered the options on this trailer, let's look at the front. Now this is a Line-X coating on the front of this. Now it is a really nice, fiberglass front cap. This line axe just acts as a rock guard, kind of a cool feature. You have an LED light on the front, the big window, and down below you have a standard battery. So this is going to be a wet cell battery for most dealers, which means you're going to have to check the water in it. Why do you have this when you have four lithium ion batteries? Well, Partly because you, it works well for the braking system. When you hook up to your vehicle, that's going to power uh, the brakes on the trailer, but it can also act as a charging center for the lithium ion batteries when you're driving down the road. So uh, you have also see this four gauge wire here with this interesting plug in. Now these systems were originally made for vehicles. So this was made to actually connect to 
the battery that's on the vehicle. Well, right here, we have a battery that's on the trailer, but you also have a, va a battery on your car or your truck that's towing it. So you have an extra cord that comes with this trailer. Again, and this is called an Anderson plug. Uh, you can find it on Renergy's website if you want to read about it. And you actually attach it here, and then you can connect it to the battery on your vehicle. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're running out of power and you needed to get a charge to maybe put the slide out in or just recharge those lithium ion batteries a little bit, that is another way to do it. So there's a lot of different ways to get some power into this so that it can keep going. All right. Now, again, so much to be learned about these systems. We're just going to touch the surface. Uh, feel free to call Princess Craft if you like more details on setting up systems like this. We do it on trailers all the time. So let us know if we can help you. Otherwise, call your local dealer, see if they're familiar with it, or you can call one of the solar-powered groups. Uh, you can find them online that are working on trailers these days. All right. Electric jack uh, right up front, uh, standard place to hold the plug here. I always like that to keep it out of the dirt and the mud, particularly if you're off-road, you know, you're not going to be on a nice concrete pad. You notice there's a lot of room up here on the tongue of this trailer. I would not be surprised if people added some extra gear up here because uh, there is plenty of space since there's no propane tanks. Moving around, this nice front, you do have a little more storage on this side of the door. Now this compartment actually has a magnetic space up here. This is the second compartment on the outside. There's only two. Neither one of them are huge. You don't get a giant pass-through space on this trailer because they've used a lot of that outside space for all the great self-sustaining lithium-ion batteries and the inverter. But you do have a light in here, and in here is where the switch is for the light that's on the front of the trailer, which is just a nice little blue light if you need to uh, uh, connect or disconnect or check on anything in the front. You still have the slam latch on this. Easy to use. Power awning. So there's a lot to talk about on this trailer, and I know I didn't cover everything. So if you've got questions, let us know. We'll be glad to answer them for you, help you understand any details of this system. I'm PJ here at Princess Craft RV in Round Rock, Texas. So glad you joined us today. See you next time.